Throughout our week of revelations from recordings of post office meetings, those we have exposed over the Horizon scandal have claimed they have or will explain themselves to the public inquiry. But today, two senior politicians, one Labour, the other Conservative, have told us that after hearing what we have broadcast, the police must get involved now. Labour's Liam Byrne, Chair of Parliament's Business and Trade Committee, bases his call on what he described as the amount of evidence that is now on the table. The Conservative's Nadim Zahawi, who grilled post office bosses at the time, says the business has a case to answer for corporate manslaughter over the deaths of sub postmasters who took their own lives. In our latest revelations from the post office tapes, investigators can be heard telling managers they are not being given the emails they were promised. Thank you and uh, for agreeing to help us with our inquiry. It's February 2015 and MPs are about to learn there's big problems at the post office. Paula, why don't you give those files over? As far as I'm aware, Mr Zahawi, we have shared whatever information was appropriate on everything. That's not what Ian Henderson said. Its boss is accused of not handing over key files to independent investigators. Your organisation has been obstructive to his independent work. Is that right or wrong? It's wrong. So you have been providing that? We have been providing that for the last few weeks. Is that right, Mr Henderson? No, it's not. I'm, I'm sorry right, to say. But tonight, we reveal what was really happening behind closed doors, with a secret recording of a meeting held six months earlier in August 2014 between Second Sight investigators Ian Henderson and Ron Warmington, and for the post office, Belinda Cortez Martin, a programme director, and lawyer Andy Parsons, as frustrated investigators plead for potentially crucial documents. What had been agreed was that we would be provided with the entire email records for the post office team that potentially would have had some contact with whatever was going on in the basement in 2008. For some reason, we've never progressed much beyond that point. So Ian, there, there is an answer to that question, and that is, you have been provided with a significant amount of email traffic. However, there is an issue about the extent to which it is appropriate for us to send ways for people's inbox, which potentially contains all sorts of information at second sight have no right to have access to. So that's a fishing expedition. Your chief executive assured us that anything that we asked for would be provided, and, and we specifically discussed emails with Paula. And far from handing it over, the post office want to know why they want it. What are you looking for, Ian? In those emails, yeah. Whether you're aiming for a particular target, whether there's a way we can help to get that particular target. Well, yeah, the way you can help, Andy, is giving us the emails. But again, I don't know what you're looking for. I don't know how the emails... We're, we're looking for evidence. Firstly, was there um, this you know, alleged secret unit operating in the, in the basement of um, uh, uh, the Jitsu office in, in Bracknell? And secondly, did they in some way have the ability to uh, uh, alter uh, transaction records? At, at branch level, without the knowledge or authorisation of the, the sub-postmaster. OK, that's, that's useful. Let, let, us, let us take that away and we'll respond to you in writing on it. OK. But none of that is new. I mean, we've been asking that question for well over a year now. Conservative MP Nadeem Zahawi today told us the police now need to step in. I think she lied to the Select Committee because clearly they were not forthcoming. And now with this explosive recording that you've obtained, uh, I think there's enough... Uh, circumstantial evidence, certainly, for a, for a thorough police investigation. I don't think it's good enough that we keep falling back on, well, let the inquiry do its work. This is much more serious. There needs to be an investigation as to, you know, corporate manslaughter and individual uh, individuals at the post office. And tonight, the chair of Parliament's Business and Trade Select Committee told us this. These are appalling new revelations by ITV and what we're watching in real time is almost like a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Given the amount of evidence that is on the table, the police are now going to have to look at this and decide whether they act. At least four sub-postmasters are known to have taken their own lives as a result of the scandal. It's destroyed the livelihoods of countless others, a point put to the post office in the 2014 meeting, but he's met with little sympathy. We're saying that the evidence itself on these cases is so bad and confusing if you want to help the applicants, 
what the applicants need is, is an answer to the fundamental question, why was I accused of, um, of theft, dragged away, in one case literally in handcuffs, um, my life was tra trashed. Can we just keep the language not emotional? They're, they're, no, I, I'm, I'm saying this is what they are asking. They're saying, you know, my life was then trashed. I've gone bust and I've lost, you know, my, my livelihood. That's all me. You know, that, that's what happened to me. Dragged with handcuffs, sent to prison, made bankrupt, lost everything. The words on that tape are too close to home for Harjinda. A sub postmaster wrongly accused of theft by the post office and sent to prison for 18 months. From the first day I went in there, I never forget the doors when they slammed behind me. It's just unbelievable. You know? I really hope there's enough room in the prison for the, all these people that I need to go there. The post office inquiry is expected to finish in the autumn. For some, justice cannot wait that long. Well, justice cannot wait that long. But Daniel, it's been seven days in which you've led our sort of coverage of this um, really quite shocking story. Yeah. I guess the question that everyone, our viewers, will be asking is, what's going to change, if anything? Well, the position right now, Raggy, is there's a public inquiry. That restarts again on Tuesday. The position of the Metropolitan Police right now is that they're not going to provide a running commentary mm. um, on this while the inquiry is going on. There is a police investigation, but that's their position. I think that position is coming under increasing pressure, as we've seen. The momentum appears to be swinging towards the idea of police intervening now because the evidence is kind of mounting up against the post office. That's the view of, of, of MPs I speak to in Parliament. That's the M MPs we spoke to um, today. As for the post office, well, their position that does remain the same. They say we remain fully focused on getting to the truth of what happened and supporting the statutory public inquiry, which is chaired by a judge with the power to question witnesses under oath um, and is therefore best placed to achieve this. In terms of the people we spoke to Belinda Cortez Martins and Andy uh, Parsons say they can't contribute um, to our report because they're contributing to the inquiry. Paula Venels and Angela van der Bogard said something similar and have expressed their sorrow at what has happened. Um, and in terms of Second Sight, well, Second Sight say they can't comment on our report either because they're a key contributor um, to the investigation, sorry, to the uh, public inquiry.